I made a leafer, leaf spring front suspension for my motorcycle. First, I designed the top and bottom clamps as well as some links in CAD or computer aided design. Then I had them cut out on a CNC plasma cutter. Here are my pieces that I had cut out. Here's sort of the main one, the coolest, biggest one. You can see the steering stem right here and then we got the two sort of fork legs right there. All of this stuff, same stuff I used for the frame for the rear wheel. The wishbones on the rear wheel, this, I'm using the same tubing for the front wheel. Logically, that makes sense to me in terms of strength and everything. I use 120 wall, one inch tube. This is our top clamp. And this guy's gonna go on over the top like this. He's going to the end of the fork. You know that, we've got, this is the linkage right here. The, at the end of the fork is gonna attach here, and then we're gonna have the wheel, and then this the actual spring is gonna attach up in the front here. And then we've got another piece here, another simple piece for, this is the other, side of the spring clamp and so that is going to go in here on the bottom actually sandwich the spring onto the bottom of the plate here that's all that goes in there and then i've also got a bunch of little oil light type bronze bearings with those oil impregnated bronze there at least for the time being some just basic bolt hardware bolts from the store here to bolt everything together all right so the other aspect on our top clamp here you can see we've got the two fork legs would go there and there and then we got the steering stem and then we got these other two holes and I've designed this so that I can have a sort of a traditional clamp thing like that on the top. So today on Hoopty Doodle, we make this steering stem for our motorcycle out of this one and a quarter inch rod. On my lathe, I then made a steering stem. All right, now it's time for a test fit. We've got our bearing. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's about, about perfect, dude. And I'm using Harley Davidson bearings. I'll have a link in the description of this video. We got my tap set up here in the lathe. All right, so that's it for this tap here. I've gone as far down as I can with this guy. And here, I'm gonna finish it off with this, perhaps this is a called a finishing tap, or like an end tap. This is for the bottom of the hole. This will reach down, the threads will reach down to the bottom of the hole. So there, you can see we've got some threads down in there. All right, so now we finally have our steering stem. Look at this thing. And now, I've got this bolt here from the store. This is the shortest 5 8 bolt that I could find. I can cut it, cut this bolt, man. Oh yes, oh yes my friends, look at that, perfect. So to put together my triple clamp, today we need to weld this onto this, some sort of jig. Sort of make sure it doesn't move around. You can see right now there is some play in there. We're gonna be tacking it, all the welding is gonna be on the bottom so that the top part will be completely unwelded. I just happen to have tubing on here. I can clamp it this way and I can clamp it this way onto this plate. All right, now I gotta make sure it is straight. Again, make sure it's straight here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and unclamp everything and sort of see if it is indeed straight. Oh, ha, ha, ha. That might actually work, dude. Wow, so that is like super straight right now. Thank the lords on that. So now we need to actually fully weld it. All right, so not a bad weld there for me. I'm gonna test fit this thing again. So I'm using the old old bearings and whatnot again. Look at All right, let's get this guy on the bottom. With the steering clamps coming together, it was now time to make the fork legs. This guy's set up in here.
All right, so there's our bend there. What I'm trying to do is sort of test it out in this guy. Something like that, but I need more of a bend. This is what we want. Oh, it's starting to feel like something now. I'm getting an emotion. My next step on these guys is to do this guy, put that on the end. So, because my design involves this bend being exactly like it is, basically, that's the idea. So, so this has to be that far out. This guy will then go on here. Good idea of where this should fall. We should have our sort of notch where we need to cut that thing out now. There. That, I believe, is what we're looking for. These guys, so that because I've got two, I've got multiples, I'm not making one custom thing, I'm making two custom things and I need them to be exactly the same. So that means making a jig, some sort of thing that I can standardize how at least it will come out. Here it is and it should work like this. Then I can come in here, weld this stuff in, and we're done. All right, so we have got this stuff welded up finally. I'm so excited to be getting to this point now. And oh, look at these welds. Oh, mother. All right, so next I've got to cut these guys down. The All right, so now that we got our caps made here, I'm gonna weld them on here. Here we are, we got some caps on there. We're looking good. Next move, I'm gonna go ahead and grind these off with a flat disc, make it look like one piece. All right, so there's that with the flap disc. That's kind of what we end up with. All right, it's getting exciting around here. Now, we're going to do these things on the sides here. This is one of the final pieces. I've got some half inch tube here, which is designed to go right in through here and meet up down here. It's supposed to bend like right here and come back and connect with this guy. All right, so now we need a bend over here so they can bend down and meet up with this tube here. I want the bend to be, to reflect this bend here. So I want it at the same angle. I've gone ahead and gotten out my angle finder figured out what this angle is. It's about 40 degrees. I've got that angle on this guy. I'm now gonna switch it over to here. It's pretty awe-inspiring. Yeah, you know it. All right, that's how it's looking. All right, so I've got this thing here cut, this length right there. Now we need to cut this length here to move this thing down just a little bit more. Boom, boom, boom. Dream is coming true. Look at this thing, man. So now it's fit up, we weld. And I've got some bronze bushings here. This is the suspension linkage for the front. I also have a number of bronze washers like this. And these are like thrust washers, which technically is a washer that is designed to be have sort of friction in it. So this is why I'm putting it on here. So I have a series of these spaced out like so in between sections that are going to be moving like that. This guy goes on another bronze washer on the other side here. And we've got another bit of linkage. There, that is how the linkage will work. These are oil light bronze, which means they're impregnated with oil so that they will constantly be sort of giving off oil as they rotate. And so these are designed exactly for this sort of purpose. As I'm doing this, I'm thinking, boy, I don't think I had to use such heavy duty metal for this. All right, now to spring this thing, I've got some options here. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna end up using. I basically 
These are both trailer springs, and I basically got the lightest weight ones I could find, the lightest spring weight. We'll see which one works. I basically have, this is like an experiment. Somewhere like there, but we gotta start somewhere, so let's give this thing a chop. All right, so now we got our leaf spring. We've got our bolts on there. We've got our spring plate on the bottom. Let's see if we can put this all together. I'm gonna put this thing on first. It's a big moment. Check this out. Look at this bike. Holy crap. That front end. That front end. Oh yeah. This works by being pulled down. And we need a link from here to the spring up here. Stick this tube in here. Mm, pretty strong, dude. All right, so 45 degrees. We can do that. All right, let's see. This is a bit of an experiment. I may just ruin some tubing here. So now I've got two that are surprisingly similar. And I had to bend three of them though to get these two. All right, so these are fully welded up at this point. Let's go try them on the bike. All right, so you can see from this angle that this is too long down here. We still need to trim this thing up to where we want it and put in another little spacer there and weld that spacer up. All right, so I've machined up a couple of these little bushings here out of one inch rod here. I drilled a hole in it basically. And it's going in up here got another one that is down here already. This one's gonna hold the axle and space out these guys and then the one up here is also going to hold a little brass bushing. All right, so we've got things tacked on there, but this is a big moment because I'm gonna let it down off of the, the lift here and let it support its own weight for the first time. All right, that did not, that is not doing what I thought it would do. Went down to nothing. All right, making some adjustments here on the spring and tightening up this clamp. That's probably important. Basically, I pushed the spring back, made it shorter up here, because that's one of the things I can play with here to adjust play on the whole linkage down here. So, let's see. All right, seems to have sat much better because now it sits. Oh, look at that. That's much better. All right, so that's more what I was thinking right about there. I thought I had it the right length, but you never know, man. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld that stuff up. Let's get these on the bike, yeah! All right, I need to get more appropriate bolts here because these are threaded all the way. I need ones that have like a shank on them quite a long way. That's pretty sweet. All right, so if I hit a big enough bump, that suspension could rotate back and I could be in trouble. So I need to do something to prevent that. Thanks to the magic of video, we now have this guy. And I'll put a link in the description to this guy, which shock I'm using. But it's a little shock. It is 165 millimeters long. 
center to center on these holes here. It's about six and a half inches, and it's got a compression stroke of like an inch and a half. And we got this for our forks. Basically what we want is the damper. The spring, we're not gonna be using. So I need to take this spring off of here, which that should be just taking this preset ring off of here. So you can sort of unscrew that guy, and the spring and everything should come off. And then up here, there's just like a little collar. You can see there's the opening right there. So once the spring tension is off all the way, like this collar should come off, so it should be able to slide off, and we should be able to take the, the spring off. All the way, and then look, this thing just falls right off of there. Kind of a tap, oh, there we go. Our spring comes right off. All right, so here we are, back to where we started, and this is what we wanted was just the damper portion. We can literally damper the suspension on that that front fork. And so looking at the front fork, this is where it's gonna, gonna go. We're gonna stick this guy right down here. My thought at the moment is that I've got this nice little spacer here that I can weld to that thing. I can also weld to the link itself. And then from there, we'll have weld another little bracket up here. All right, so having this damper on here should act as a stop, a bump stop sort of thing for the suspension, because it won't allow this to go out further than what it is right now. Because you can see, I can kind of compress this thing but I can't pull it out. So that should work for our purposes to keep this thing from flipping back too far. Damper itself should make this ride a lot, lot, lot smoother. So that this thing is not just all the time. It should make it, should even that stuff out a lot nicer. So next we gotta make some brackets. All right, so we've got some square tubing here to make brackets out of. This is like 14 gauge tube. I think it's like an inch and a quarter diameter outside. And so this guy fits in here fairly nicely, it's a little bit loose, and so we might have to tighten stuff up a little bit there. I find this is a nice, convenient way to make brackets, a base from which to start making a bracket. All right, so let's go figure out where the center point is, mark the center point, and then figure out where we want this thing to be exactly. And then we want to uh, center punch that, and then drill it out. All right, so now with our holes drilled in here and this is cleaned up a little bit, now we can stick this guy in here. Now we can kind of start to get an idea that this doesn't have much of a rotation that way, so we need to trim back the sides here a little bit. All right, so to do that, I have this inch and a quarter round tube, and I'm gonna stick that on here, and we're gonna trace that around, and we're gonna cut off the little edges here, the corners. So now, we put this guy in here. A greater range of motion. Right, I think this will work, so I'm gonna go ahead and chop this off. So now I have split this thing in two, shaved off a little bit of meat in the middle there, so now these come together, and it's narrower than it was before. We had some slack in here before, but now we have none. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld these together. I wanna box this thing in, so to speak. We got this back side here that's all open. Box that in so that it is stronger. And I'm gonna add this little plate here on top of that. And we're just gonna bend this around as we weld it. Here's our cap on there. So now you can see the open end down there and everything a little eyelets, and I'm gonna go ahead and grind all this stuff off of there so it doesn't look like a mushroom. And there we are, it's much smoother looking now. All right, so here we are, we've got our brackets finished up on this guy. There's the first one, there's the second one. So, this is gonna go on here, I want this to be an extension of this linkage down here basically and then this one's going to attach to the fork. So now I just need to get these things sort of jigged up on here and then we'll tack them in and then we'll fully weld this sucker up. All right it's welded up. I'm going to go ahead and throw that damper on there. There it is. Pretty fancy. All right let's see how it does now with the shock. significantly stiffer. Oh, 
Oh, well, I definitely think we solved the problem of that thing just flopping around way too fast and flipping backwards. I don't see this ever flipping backwards like that ever again. Damper makes a huge difference on the, how that thing functions. All right, so you can probably tell when I'm pushing this suspension down like that, that the wheel is not traveling back up the way it should. And that is resulting in the wheel just sort of jumping up and down off the road which is basically what will happen if I ride this thing. What this indicates to me is that I need a stronger spring on this suspension, so I need to add some more leaves on there. I'm gonna work on that behind the scenes here and try and get that dialed in. The other thing I need to play with on this is the front brake, and I'm gonna do that in a whole separate video. So you can see our brake rotor here, and the problem is that we need to mount a caliper, the caliper for the brakes somewhere and there's some physics involved here that is a bit complicated i'm basically going to end up having to cut out a new piece one of these links here off of that we're going to mount the caliper it's going to hang out back here and there may be some other engineering solutions that go into trying to reduce brake dive on this because that is my major hurdle having to mount it back here we'll see what we come up with but that will be in a separate video I also need to go through and sort out all the bolts on this. I still got just sort of mock-up bolts on this thing at the moment. I need to get it so they all have this nice shank on them that goes all the way through the components and then sort out the length of the thread on the end. I hope that you've enjoyed this build as much as I have. This leafer suspension thing is so awesome to me. Like, I just freaking love this thing. It looks so cool, man. It's so cool looking. Um, I'm really looking forward to riding this thing. I will be ecstatic if it is not like the worst ride ever. I have a low bar for this. A, because it's the first time I've ever built a front suspension. And B, just the nature of this leaf spring thing. I'm not so. Sh I'm not really sure how nice they, you can really expect them to be. And C, we have kind of, to me, uh, we don't have much wheel travel on this thing. So we'll see how that works. I think the damper is gonna help a lot, but we'll see how it turns out. I will have ride videos later on once the bike is actually finished and put together and we get it on the road, but look for ride videos later on. Yeah, this thing looks cool though, doesn't it? All right, so lessons learned from this build for me were that number one, all these linkages have to be exactly the same on both sides. These two that I handmade on the front, the linkage that goes from the spring down, these were off. I One of them was off by two millimeters, by about a sixteenth of an inch. That was enough to tilt, to make the wheel tilt to one side. It basically shifts all this stuff around and that shifts the wheel around. Designing and cutting out the linkages on the CNC machine, well worth it. So thanks for watching this video. I hope it's helpful. If there's any other maniacs out there, I know that I was a maniac for years looking for videos on how to build these old school suspensions like this. And so I hope that this inspires somebody else out there and helps them out on some small detail that maybe they didn't know before. Thanks for watching this video. Keep on wrenching on your own projects. I hope they turn out awesome. And we'll see you next time.